It's a good question. We're still searching for that, to be honest. And it's meant, it's interesting you mentioned Tom Thibodeau. I'm a, a little bit of a disciple of his. I I, uh, I believe in how he coaches work ethic, defense first. Um, so I, I'm, I'd like to think I'm a bit similar philosophically to mm -hmm. Coach Thibodeau. But, um, you know, I, I, as I said, I think we have to learn. And it might be that, you know, my personality – isn't suited to the early stages of, of when we bring the players back in, maybe I have to turn them over to some strength and conditioning coaches and maybe the assistant coaches. And, and maybe I don't even look at them because I might get frustrated because they're not working as hard as I like them to work, mm -hmm. but let them go through that build up period. And, uh, and then when it's time to, you know, push the gas pedal hard, uh, you know, it might be time for me to come back in and, um, inject my philosophy and my methodology of, you know, hard work from the time you walk in the gym until you go to bed at night. So, you know, um, this, this game and, and life is a never ending learning process. So, you know, this is just another example of, of how I have to continue to evolve in, in what is really a different world now. Yeah. So, and then speaking of evolvement and you of evolving, sorry, in the basketball world now with coaching, since you've been coaching since I don't know, since the '90s or the early 2000s. I think the Neanderthal age was when I started coaching. Sometime <laughs> Pro Magnon or Neanderthal, sometime in in that era. Yeah. Yeah, you've been coaching for a lot of years now, and yeah, the recent tournament was the one in Jordan. And that, so that wasn't like the best showing because we only finished fourth in the tournament behind, um, I think, Jordan, Egypt, and Tunisia. But there are a lot of learning points because I think you mentioned in, in interviews that we welcome back players that, were un, that weren't healthy in the previous tournaments, like 30, Matt, uh, Ray, and Dave. And you guys played with them. And I think you were like tinkering with some rotations and other plays that Dwight also mentioned when he guested here that there were a lot of things he learned also that you weren't able to try out in the previous tournament. So what were some of the major takeaways you could share that you saw from the team, maybe positive and negative in that whole tournament? <laughs> I, I think that um, it's, it's natural, particularly for you guys in the media, and you speak to the fans really more than you speak to, to I guess, the participants. So it's natural that there's always... Um, a view or an emphasis on results. Um, but we are in a, a program where results sometimes are secondary. Now, obviously, if we're playing in FIBA competitions, we're going after results. Uh, but apart from that, we are really looking at um, how our program is developing players for 2023 and developing a system for 2023. So much of the Abdullah Cup was about that, looking at combinations of players, looking at players in certain positions. And we were a little bit um, unfortunate. Again, not having Kai there, it meant shifting some of our guys that we want to develop as wing players like Justin Baltazar and Carl Tamayo, shifting them more to the front line, to the power forward position. And, um, you know, not having the opportunity to play them as much where we want to play them. But that also gave us the opportunity to play other guys, you know, in other positions a bit more. So it's really about roster evolution and it's really about challenging our system. We made some huge changes in our system, even from the Olympic qualification tournament to the King of Dulla Cup. We're really striving for a lot more offensive tempo, even in the half court. So it's not just speed up and down the floor, but it's also speed within how we play the game. Uh, we're trying to be more unpredictable in the way that we play um, at the offensive end. We don't want to go away from being a team that uh, produces offensive scoring opportunities for all players. We don't want to be, you know, driven by a superstar mentality that we have to get the ball into a certain player's hands. So we need a system that is more complex. It's harder to execute for the players because everybody bears the weight of responsibility. Everybody has to strive for efficiency. But I think when you're not a top tier talented team in the world, like a Serbia or like an Italy or a France or US, you have to be more difficult to defend. 
And that means more people have to contribute. So we have to work hard to produce high quality, efficient shots and it takes time. And, you know, some players will go hot and cold. Some players are better systems players. Some players are better with a more individualistic approach. So all of this is, is part of the, I guess, the testing process. You know, we didn't, we didn't uh, decide to build a rocket and fly to the moon the next day. You know, they had to, they had to have a lot of research, a lot of test flights, a lot of casualties, and you know, a lot of failures before there were successes. And and I think when we talk about the Philippine national team competing well at the World Cup, qualifying for the Olympics, we're talking about something that is virtually trying to put a man on the moon, or or maybe even put a man on Mars. You know, we're that far away from it, and. Um, we have an awful lot of work to do, but I think we have the right people, including the players. I think for the most part, I think we have the right people involved. Um, certainly management is 100% behind us. The early returns from the players have been very good. The results have been very good, much, much better than expected. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we don't want to get complacent and think we've accomplished anything yet. We haven't. Yeah, uh, we want to continue to focus more on our failures than our successes and, and continue to realize that it's a it's a never ending learning process. Yeah. With your immense knowledge here in basketball, like in the European style of play and all these system like ball movement and all the, a lot of the other um, concepts that the European countries also run. When do you know like when to introduce like a, you mentioned a more complex style of offense or defense to the team? Because of course you can't just throw everything that you know at them because they'll get so confused at the start. So when do you know like now you mentioned in Jordan you tried new concepts and new plays in order to have a different up tempo offense. So when do you know when to like yeah try something else? And of course it won't be effective right away. Like that's kind of you're gonna be lucky if it's effective right away. When do you know when to insert it and then I'll, uh, maybe also how to alter it or uh, change it a bit if in order to make them understand it better or to, for it for you guys to execute it in the game. You know what? I'm gonna talk to some of my friends over at ESPN. I think you're ready to go, man. You ask great <laughs> questions. <Thanks>. Seriously, <laughs> um, you know when. Well, I mean, it's not an exact science, so you're, you're guessing a lot. But yeah. one of the indicators is when your players start to get pretty good at one style of play mm -hmm. or one system, and you know that that system can evolve more. So once they start to get some mastery over things, then you can move forward. And the other thing is when it becomes evident that your opponents can figure out your system pretty well. And so your system doesn't have enough complexity in itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were very happy with uh, um, the way we played in the OQT, you know, going close with Serbia and, and having the lead against Dominican at the halftime. And, and really it looked more like our defense failed against Dominican because we struggled with the one-on-one -on -one play of the great Dominican guards. But we were more disappointed with our offense. We were more disappoint disappointed with the fact that the system wasn't generating good shot opportunities. And um, so on the back of that, with a lot of analysis and, and uh, a lot of discussion with the assistant coaches, we decided to um, just kind of take a different direction, of it. Not, not a complete left turn, but you know, sort of divert a little bit in our offensive approach and try, as I said, to get more tempo, more pace, more movement into our offense and, and try to make our players a little bit less difficult to defend. The challenge then becomes their decision-making and their ability to identify opportunities yeah. uh, and become good decision-makers. And so that that's what you're referring to when you say you're not going to put it in and right away it's going to work <laughs> very well. You know, that's the evolution process for the players.